In this week's video, I've got 10 really cool tips to share that can help you get more from your camera and take better photos. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials, all designed to help you get more from your digital camera so you can take better photos. And in this week's video, I've got 10 really cool things that you may want to try out, 10 tips, 10 tricks, all designed, again, to help you get more from your camera make photography more fun, more creative, and more engaging. I'm also gonna try and keep this video to under 10 minutes. So with no time to waste, let's get into it. Tip number one is all about focusing. Now, if you're taking a portrait, and it doesn't matter whether this is a person or an animal, it could be a dog, it could be a cat, whatever, then it's really important to make sure that eyes are in focus. So learning how to control your focus points, I think is really, really important. So let me very quickly show you how to do this using a Nikon and a Canon camera. Looking through the viewfinder on a Nikon camera and you will probably see something like this. These are the camera's focus points. Now when we take a picture, we press the shutter button halfway down and the camera focuses. But sometimes we end up with this, which is not the shot I wanted. The camera has chosen to focus on a dog toy in the foreground rather than my dog. Now if this happens to you, don't worry, we can fix it. All we need to do is take control of the camera's focus points so we can select the focus point we want to use rather than let the camera do it. Now to do this, I need to turn the auto focus points off. Press the I button on the back of the camera, then using the multi selector, select autofocus area mode and choose single point autofocus. Press OK to lock this in. The back of the screen confirms which autofocus point is active. Currently it's the middle focus point. And now we can select whichever focus point we want just by using the multi selector on the back of the camera. To do the same on a Canon camera, look for a button with this symbol close to it or above it. Once you've located the button, press it once, then turn the dial on the top of the camera to select the focus point you want to use. To lock it in, press the shutter button halfway down and you're done. Now, generally speaking, we see the world from a certain viewpoint, which is eye level. Now, when taking photos, I'll sometimes seek out different viewpoints so I can deliver an image that shows the world from a viewpoint that is less familiar. This is so easy to do, but it can really make your pictures more interesting and more engaging. Let me show you some examples. In photography, composition is everything. Here, I'm just taking a picture with my phone, but I'm going for that really low viewpoint, trying to get some really cool reflections in the puddle. For this shot, I'm laying on the grass just a few feet away from the subject. And here's a couple of our dog Boo. And for me, these images work better because we're not looking at the subject from an adult perspective looking down. We're seeing the world from the same eye level as the subject. Now my next tip is to have a go at creating images using the zoom burst effect. Now this is really fun and involves taking a picture and adjusting the zoom while you're actually taking the picture. Let me show you how it works. Now whilst this might look like an exploding firework, both of these shots are actually fairy lights that I shot at my desk. Now this technique is hit and miss, as you can see from these other attempts. But it is a lot of fun to do. It works particularly well with lights at night and no two images will ever be the same. So to begin, I'm gonna put the camera in the aperture priority mode. Now this means that if I turn this dial, I can adjust the aperture. Now the camera will then adjust the shutter speed. Now the goal here is to slow the shutter down. So what I'm gonna do is turn the dial so I'm making the aperture smaller. This means less light can pass through the lens and the camera will slow the shutter down. Here we go, I've now got a half second exposure. Now if I want, I can adjust the aperture even more. Now here I've made the aperture even smaller, which means the exposure time is now one second. And the best thing here to do is just to experiment. Try different aperture and shutter speed combinations just to see what results you get. Just remember to turn the zoom on the lens as the shutter opens. My next tip may come in handy if you're ever struggling with manual focus. It's called digital zoom. Let me show you how it works. 
So to demonstrate this, I'm using a Canon camera. I've got a bottle top here on the desk that I want to take a photo of. So I'm going to turn on the live view and I'm in manual focus. Now at the moment, the subject is out of focus. Now adjusting the uh, focus on the lens is easy to do. And you can see the subject coming into focus. But it's really hard to know when you're absolutely spot on with a focus. So here's where digital zoom comes in. Look for a symbol that looks like a magnifying glass on the back of the camera. It's usually got a plus. Press the button and it will zoom in. You should be able to move around as well using the buttons on the back of the camera. Now it's clear to see the subject is not in focus. So I'm reaching around the front, adjusting the focus until the subject looks nice and crisp. I think that's it. Reset and I'm ready to take my shot. Because this is a slow shutter speed, I'm going to be using the timer. So I'm going to turn the uh, live view off. I'm going to turn the timer on, two second timer. And there we have our picture. And that is absolutely spot on. Tip number five is to have a go at blurring backgrounds. In photography, we use the term a shallow depth of field, and this can make your picture more interesting simply because the subject will stand out from the background, which of course is blurry and out of focus. Now this one can be a bit tricky to do, so let me show you how it's done. Although very different in terms of subjects, these images do have something in common. The subject is sharp and the background is out of focus. In fact, with this shot, you can clearly see the foreground is also out of focus. The netting of the goal is an important part of the image as it gives context to the player, who is of course the goalkeeper, but the number one player is the star of the image because he is the sharpest part of the image and that's what draws our attention. This technique is called a shallow depth of field and I'm going to give you a three part checklist that will help you achieve this look. Number one is to open the aperture in the lens as wide as the lens will allow. This means lowering the F number. Number two, extend the lens or in other words, zoom in. The longer the focal length, the shallower the depth of field. Number three, if possible, get close to the subject. Whilst not always practical, how far you are from the subject can make a big difference. Now, top tip here is if you have a prime lens like the popular Nifty 50, use it with a wide aperture of f1.8. It's great for blurring backgrounds. Tip number six is to have a go at long exposure photography. Typically we do this in the evening or at night time and ideally you're going to need a tripod to get the best results. But using this technique, you can take amazing photos like these. The term long exposure simply means that the camera's shutter was open for an extended time. The longer the shutter is open, the more light can be recorded by the camera. So at night, for example, even though there isn't much light available, we can take really cool shots like this one. Here, the shutter was open for 30 seconds. Now, I definitely recommend watching my video on night photography, which goes into more detail. But if you're a beginner, you can try this for starters. Put the camera in the aperture priority mode and adjust the aperture to f8 and make sure your ISO is set at 200. The camera will select a shutter speed that suits the scene and you're good to go. But a top tip is to use a tripod and also set the camera's self timer. Tip number seven is to have a go at black and white photography, also known as monochrome. Now for this, you don't need to edit your images, you don't need any software, you can do it all in camera. Let me show you how to set it up. If using a Canon camera, look for picture styles. To make an adjustment, simply press the Q button, select picture styles, and from the options, look for monochrome. Press the set button to lock it in, and now you're done, and now you're shooting black and white. With a Nikon camera, you need to be changing picture control. To do this, press the I button, select picture control. From the options, look for monochrome and press the OK button to lock in. Now with your Nikon, you're shooting black and white. If you're a regular viewer to my channel, then there's a good chance you're going to already know this next tip. But of course, if you're new to photography, if you're a beginner and certainly if you're new to the channel, this next tip is for you. Tip eight is all about understanding exposure compensation. Exposure compensation is a really great camera feature and allows us to adjust the exposure 
to make our images brighter or darker. To show you how this works on this Canon camera, I'm going to select the program mode. Now to adjust the exposure compensation, all I need to do is hold down the button on the back of the camera, marked with a plus and minus symbol. I then dial to the right to increase the exposure and dial to the left to decrease the exposure. Simple as that. Now with a Nikon camera, the only real difference is the button is on the top of the camera rather than the back of the camera. Again, I'm selecting the program mode. All I do now is hold down the exposure compensation button, dial into the right to increase the exposure, and again, dial into the left will decrease the exposure. Now my next tip may come in very handy if you like taking photos of moving subjects, and this is how to set up your camera's burst mode. Particularly useful for moving subjects, there have been a number of occasions recently where I've used the camera's continuous shooting mode. This is also sometimes called the burst mode or the drive mode. To change the settings on a Canon camera, you press the drive button. You now have a few options, your continuous shooting mode, and it's also worth mentioning here, you will also find your self timers and continuous timers. Very handy when doing long exposures, and I talked about this earlier in the video. To select continuous, press set, and you're ready to go. Now Nikon call this the release mode, press the button, and you can choose from the options, including single frame, continuous shooting, there's a quiet option, there's also of course a self timer, very handy for long exposures. To select continuous, press the OK button on the back of the camera. My final tip is to never stop learning and never stop practicing because that's how we get better at things. So tip number 10 is actually a bit of a shameless plug for this channel where I have over 200 videos that you can watch for free at any time. Plus I add new videos to the channel each and every week and they're all designed to help you get more from your digital camera. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow and it helps the videos get noticed. All that's left for me to do is to say thanks for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.